Professor Clements with you, investigating the Wheatstone Bridge circuit that allows one to find the value of an unknown resistance, the number of ohms. And again, this is uh, in the category of a null measurement. Um, we're going to set up uh, an adjustable resistance R3. We're going to set a value there such that the current in the galvanometer in this middle branch is zero. So when that is true, when the current here is zero, that tells us the potential at point B is the same as potential at point D. That's the purpose of our galvanometer, to show us when we balance the potentials on the two sides of the Wheatstone bridge. Um, we have current coming in to this node, a portion of the current, I3, a label going through R3, I1 going through R1. Uh, we have some external battery here that is supplying the current. Uh, we don't need to know its value. We, uh, I've drawn this such that I1 continues down to here. Can you reason out why is I1 here and also here? Why is this current the same as in this uh, resistor 1? Well, perhaps you caught that I said that I sub G is zero. There is no current in this middle branch. So the current is going straight on through. Same thing for I3. I have I3 and R3. I3 continues, this value continues through R sub X. This analysis here will deal with potential drops across resistors. And you may be familiar that the potential drop across the resistor is equal to the current times the resistance value. So let's see what that generates as we uh, analyze this. Um, again, we're going to change R3 and uh, make the circuit in a, a balanced state such that IG is zero. The potentials at B and D are equal. And those potentials, they have, uh, there's a common potential on the left side of these resistors. That's a potential at point A. If the galvanometer has zero current in it, there's no potential difference here. There's no motivation for the electrons to move from B to D or D to B. Um, consequently, we have the same potential drop. So I3 times R3 is equal to I1 times R1. The potential drops are the same. On the back half of the circuit, again, we have a common potential at point C. The potential drop I1 R2 is the same as the potential drop I3 times R sub X. Again, these potentials are the same at B and D. We drop down to the same potential, whether we consider going through R2 or go through Rx. And potential drop is calculated with current in the resistor multiplied by the resistance value. So the left half of the circuit generates our first equation here. I3, R3 equals I1, R1. The uh, right side of the circuit generates this second equation. I3, Rx equals I1, R2. We're allowed to divide equations. Algebra provides that. So we're going to divide these two equations. And we have uh, the ability to use our information that the currents are the same. Um, the current in Rx is the same as the current in R3. The current in R2 is the same as the current in R1 on the, uh, uh, in the bottom branch of the circuit. So our currents cancel. I3 cancels I3. I1 cancels I1. Um, and we can solve for R sub X, just multiply both sides by R3. The currents are gone, they've been canceled off. Our unknown resistance is simply R3, this is our variable resistor, multiplied by R2 over R1. So let's come back and look at this uh, circuit again. The Wheatstone bridge gives us a means for finding the value of an unknown resistance. Its operation, our principle of operation, is that we adjust R3 such that the voltage drop through R3, across R3, gives us a potential at point B that's the same as the potential at point D. The voltage drop here 
equals the voltage drop here. I1 R1 equals I3 R3. We have again a common potential drop on the right side of the circuit. I3 Rx equals um, R2 I1 or I1 R2, whichever you want first. So we can write down these two equations, these the potential drop uh, equal and equal. The potential drop on the right side, two resistors are equal. We write out the, we divide the two equations and then uh, we know that the currents are the same. This I3 is the same as this R3, I3. And the I1 here continues to here. Again, there's no current coming into or out of this middle branch that would cause I1 to be different uh, compared to the I1 that I've labeled over here. So the currents are the same, they cancel off, and we can easily solve for R sub X. So this provides a way of making a measurement of an unknown resistance as long as you have good confidence in the values of R1, R2, and R3. So that can be, uh, be tricky, but if you have uh, reliable resistors for R1, R2, and R3, you can with confidence calculate the value of the unknown resistance. The Wheatstone Bridge, another example of a null measurement where we're getting the null here, making this current go to zero. So keep reading, keep practicing.